For Jay Kehoe, walking his daughter Sarah to the bus stop each day has been a cherished ritual, a chance to bond before their busy days. A year ago, with Sarah safely off to school, Jay would have gone to work. Now he goes home. You know, I have to call up workers' comp the first thing this morning. We only received a partial payment. Because last year, on Veterans Day, this Army veteran hurt his back at his warehouse job. He says his job disappeared while he was on disability. And in five days, unless there's a miracle, their house will be gone as well. It's difficult right now. Um, right now we're being evicted from our home. The Kehoes are losing their home to foreclosure. They have five days to pack up and move out. Good days and bad days. Hobbled by injury, he can lift only the lightest of boxes. And his wife, Catherine, is sick with the flu today, so he's on his own. By late afternoon, it looks like nothing's been packed. I had nothing done. And it's time to collect Sarah from the bus stop. This isn't the story of people who lived extravagantly and frittered away their money. It was a series of unfortunate events in the life of an American family. It was a... Uh, it was a snowball. Avalanche, man. That avalanche was the perfect storm of bad economy, corporate merger, injury, and illness. There was a corporate shakeup where Jay worked, and his $67,000 salary was cut by $22,000. Company paid health insurance disappeared. They filed bankruptcy when Catherine's medical bills reached almost $80,000. You're crazy, <laughs> we didn't have any credit card debt. It was all medical bills. I'm driving a 98 Honda. You know, I'm, I'm, not, I'm not rolling in a Hummer. To cope with the pressure, Jay sees a psychologist once a week and has started keeping another standing appointment with God. The Kehoe's tiny piece of the American dream is a three-bedroom townhouse on a neighborly court in Mason, Ohio, about 30 miles north of Cincinnati. They paid $115,000 six years ago. It went back to the bank at auction six months ago for $87,000. Still, Jay and Catherine fought hard to get it back with the help of a nonprofit group called ESOP. We are usually pretty successful. In this case, we gave it our best shot. Uh, and the most they'll do is, you know, this is what is owed on the house. You write us a check and uh, you can have your house back. Mark Seifert runs ESOP, which stands for Empowering and Strengthening Ohio's People. He says the Kehoes represent the second wave of national foreclosures that's hit Ohio particularly hard. We still see folks that have, you know, those stupid, crazy loans maybe, you know, they shouldn't have gotten. Uh, but the vast majority of the people we're seeing today have good fixed, fixed rate mortgages that you know, they lost their job, they, they had a health issue, they had a death in the family, they, you know, whatever, anything that could happen, you know, life happens. Back at the Kios, it's Friday. Catherine Maybe feels better, be so that. she's up and pitching in. I kind of hope somebody's going to shake me really hard soon and, we, and this is all going to be a bad dream, but it, I know it's not going to happen. So. They haven't found the free help or a truck, and the sheriff's deadline is Tuesday at noon. Tensions are rising. I understand that. I'm not going to have my kids sitting there watching or coming home to all of our stuff being out on, in, on the curb. Catherine takes medical breaks. She suffers from Crohn's disease, a debilitating gastrointestinal disorder that's put her in the hospital 19 times in 20 years. That pre-existing condition makes her hard to insure. How much did you pay every month for health insurance? Thirteen. Thirty-six, thirteen hundred dollars per month. Yeah, we made the decision between, you know, bankruptcy and and our house being safe that way, to um, health insurance, and now I have neither. Still, the Kehos say they're lucky. Catherine's parents live nearby and will take them in temporarily, but that doesn't make it any easier. You know, Jay told me a couple of weeks ago. He said, you know, this is, you know, drywall, sheetrock, and brick. It's, it's home because we're here, but, you know, home can be anywhere. And I said, yeah, but it's ours. It was. And that's something that is really difficult to deal with. Really happy because there could be a meaning that in my mattress here. My other mattress doesn't really feel very good. We 
each bite is smaller. Jay and Catherine have tried to shield 8-year-old Sarah and 13-year-old Colin. The kids know what's happening but seem insulated by youthful optimism. Well, you got your room all painted so nicely. Are you, gonna be, are you sad to leave this? I, I am sad, just, just a bit, but I'm also glad because I'll be with my grandparents. But uh, it's, it's kind of like a fresh, fresh start for us, I guess. Monday morning, and the house still looks like a tornado hit. It's time for Jay and Sarah to take their walk to the bus stop. Catherine goes along. It's a wrenching moment. The last time Sarah will catch the bus from here. Hello, Back at home, a real estate agent calls to dangle a $2,000 check if they'll leave by midnight. We'll be done uh, probably 11.59 this evening, ma'am. That promise seems empty until late afternoon. Eight hours to go, and you see why the Kehoes love their community. In their time of need, the neighbors come through. They've been so sweet to me. You know, I, just, I just love them. I just hope God takes care of them. Seven hours to go, and the real estate agent, who doesn't want to be on camera, arrives with the agreement. Six hours to go, and people from a local church, strangers, bring a trailer and helping hands. Amazing acts of incredible kindness tonight. People came from all over, strangers, uh, friends and neighbors, to do things for us because we couldn't. As promised, just before midnight, it is finally over. We're exhausted, we're done, and can't believe we are. <laughs> Very happy we are, but we're done. This is Vicki Mabry for Nightline in Mason, Ohio.